one of my fishing buddies says that trout tend to live in gorgeous places, and he's right. Here we go. The fundamentals of fly fishing aren't always clear. It's not the final count that matters, but how you tackle the sport. To fish is to hope, right? Yeah. <laughs> hope flows through Kathy Ackerman. Five minutes into the water, we caught one. What, about that big? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but an hour later, she and instructor Brett well, you, Salter you just work it back behind you. Are still doing okay. a lot of fishing. I guess fishing and catching are two different things. You're doing great. Thank you. Even a leaf can reel her in for more. I thought I had something, but I had a maple. This is just such an amazing weekend that I never would have dreamed. Ooh, that was a good cast. Thank you. This after a real life nightmare. When you're in your second round of chemo, about the last thing you're thinking about is signing up for anything. But it led to something. Look at that delicious fly. Come on. This isn't just a fishing trip for women. It's also Kathy's first therapy session. Beautiful. What I found out about breast cancer is it sounds awful, but it brings as many wonderful things as it does awful things. And one of them has been this weekend. More than a dozen women at this weekend retreat are in the same boat. They're learning to fish, but teaching each other. You'd be amazed what's traveling right between your feet right now. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> not, not literally, but. There was just something so nice about, you know, showing up and, and knowing that it really didn't matter if you had eyelashes or if, uh, <laughs> you know, your hair was only a quarter of an inch long. It, it didn't matter because all of them knew what you had been through. And when you leave this place, you carry the essence of the people you've been with. Hello. Treatment took its toll on Kathy. She finished chemotherapy only three months ago, yet she's been standing in this chilly river for hours. All right, yeah, there we go. Now every day when I wake up, it's, I stop and go. It's a great day. Even if it's a one fish kind of day. Caught a rock. The other side of cancer is better than the front side. It's this. Mm, great attitude. That keeps Kathy flying high. But I'll take this weekend with me because I've learned so much about how to go on with the rest of my life as a breast cancer survivor. A survivor casting for recovery. And there is just something about being here and just being. <laughs>let people know what to expect when they head out the door. Even before we step outside, the weather forecast is a window to the world. And we hit 22 degrees this morning. The highs and lows of local television news. Here's a look outside. On Meteorologist your Julie Wonder gestures in front of a blank wall. Clearing things out. That looks like this on TV. Chicago, but we certainly were just as cold as a lot of folks farther up to the north. Take the break. But you do become a teacher to some extent. I really just think I'm talking to a camera sometimes. You don't really realize the impact you might make. A barometer of that impact is in Hendersonville, where Logan Heim waits patiently until it's time. Now, in high definition, this is your News 13 Skywatch forecast. Once in position, he hangs on every word and repeats as much as he can. Logan is autistic. His mom, Juliet, says meteorology sparked a significant breakthrough. This boy is 13 years old and he is learning how to talk. And it's, it's really, really exciting. High 52, low 29. Several months ago, speech therapist Kara Gregory realized her client's passion for weather. He's so interested in, in Julie's role there of delivering the weather. The sunshine is back. He's really interested in taking on that, that role himself. Stay with us to find out. They use recorded broadcasts as a learning tool. I'm writing down the sentences um, in a shorter form um, that Julie is saying. Will you say the weather for us? Yes. Of uh, o'clock, it will be 52 degrees. At 8 o'clock, it will be 32 degrees. That was nice and loud. And nice. along with what he says, Logan also improves non-verbally. The different things that Julie does when she's saying the weather, the gestures that she uses. Um, he'll even use facial expressions that she's using and 
um, you'll see he's moving his body back and forth, and that's actually a really big deal for, for people with autism. Communication is so challenging for him, and there's so much social pressure. Now it feels like 23 degrees. To appreciate where he's standing today, you'd have to look back at nearly a decade of progress. Diagnosed with autism when he was four. With Logan, it's always been baby steps. I remember the year that he learned to pronounce the S, and that was his one, one thing that he learned in that one year was pronouncing the S. Juliet now holds out hope she'll be able to have a conversation with her son one day. I want to know what his interests are, what his fears are, what his own goals are in life. They are questions and any mom wants to ask. Is he happy? Is there more we can do to help him? The unanswered questions lead them here. It's going to be really exciting. What's up? It's been like two. As we told you earlier, meteorologists educate viewers in their own way every day. Our wind chill was as low as eight. And while Julie can predict the weather, so here's your future cast. She didn't foresee a story like this. Wow. What do you think? You like it? Yes. Is it very cool? Huh? Hi, Logan. Hi, Joey. How are you? Good. Good? For him, this is like Christmas. Logan meets his TV mentor. This is the remote that I use. And we have your seven day, which is always a fun part. The green means go. I'm going to touch right there. Once he has the mechanics down, hold on to this. Logan's on his way. Twenty two. Tonight. Saturday, 59. Saturday, 62. His special day felt like seven. After years grasping for words. Thursday. 55. Almost Friday. unthinkable that weather speaks to him and that Logan 62. talks back. Monday, 65. Tuesday, 55. That's fantastic. Good job. Friday, too. Today. A reminder of who's watching and who's learning. It's so touching. I hardly have words for it. And by the green screen. Friday, two degrees. Today. A lesson for all of us. Thanks for joining us. Face. Oh, turn the eyes. Perfect. It's just so special to see. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome, Logan. Behind his home in a dark little shed, seven months ago, here we are. Alan Hansel began preparing for a late summer ritual. So they're tucked away in there. Stored in bins of wood chips in plastic bags, each with a number, a classification, a history. And each is my baby. He plans for the giveaway. It's kind of hard to give it up, but um, it's time for me to give it up. But it's months away. The plot of land in the Black Mountain retirement community he lives is still hardened by winter. I can see it being a lot of work ahead. <laughs> but he sees possibilities. I can picture the way it did look back in September at the peak of the season. Then late May, after the last frost. This is the same plot that I've used for the last few years. His babies, the tubers he cultivated for months in his shed. I don't need to hold on to them. Were planted and poised for a summer of growth. That's what I want to do. Last week, the sign came up. There it is. The scissors were hung out for any resident who can clip the stem of one of his beautiful dahlias. They do look good, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It is just so joyful. And maybe even more so to take them home. For seven years now, Alan Hetzel has grown his dahlias just to give them away. I grow them for the satisfaction of sharing them with other people. He sees dahlias like he sees people coming in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Everyone is unique. That's too many, but I'm gonna take some to my husband. He's in the health care. Pat Trotman will make a special dahlia delivery to her husband who has Alzheimer's. I really have never seen anything like it in my entire life. They are so perfect and we are imperfect. And I'm glad to see other people can see what I see in those blooms. I see perfection. The closer you look at it, the, the more beauty you see. Beauty within reach of anyone who wants to take it. Yeah. <laughs> From the man with a green thumb and a heart of gold. It's the Dahlia guy. I'm the Dahlia man. And with the passing of the seasons, 
the Dahlia man will ready for another summer day. I grow them to share them with other people. He'll once again grow them simply for the giving. It's, it's priceless, and he is too. Makes it all worthwhile, even when they go away. <laughs>